Aloha. I am at the Aloha Hawaiian Pokey and Grill. And I'm just about to go inside and get myself some Hawaiian food and try it. I was going to do this intro outside, but the wind is blowing at about a thousand miles an hour. It's like a Hawaiian hurricane, I guess. Okay, so I'm about to go inside. I don't know if I can record when I'm in there. It'll depend, I guess, whether they have music blaring or not. Okay, so let's go in. No, I don't like poke. Oh, do you, uh, you don't eat poke? No. Okay. So she's letting me try the poke. I've never... I had raw fish once and I just wasn't crazy. She says, this is the best seller. So, uh. It actually, it tastes really good, but the texture is hard for me to wrap my head around. Okay, so I just ordered lunch. And I got the Kula. I'm going to mispronounce everything, so hopefully I can dub in the cashier's pronunciation of some of these things. But so what I got was the Loco Moco Single. Oh, Loco Moco Single. The Four Seasons drink. Four Seasons. Which I'm really anxious to try. It sounds delicious. A crunchy Musubi. Musubi? Crunchy Musubi. And I guess what that is, Spam and rice wrapped in seaweed and I, I think it's deep fried <laughs> sounds really healthy and then i got the uh, kulu and they're saying belly the kalua. pork belly lunch but i asked for chicken katsu instead of the katsu chicken uh, pork belly i am dining across the street from the women's prison this restaurant's in a very odd location but okay let's get started let's try this so I'm anxious to taste this Four Seasons drink. It's uh, juice nectar and it, it appears to include pineapple juice, mango juice, orange juice, and I think that's a watermelon. Let's see what the ingredients say. Mango, oh guava, pineapple, and orange. Sounds really good. Oh yeah, it smells incredibly tropical. It's really sweet and it's way thicker than I was expecting. And I actually can't can't make out any one of those four fruits. Probably the strongest flavor is actually orange. I'm not sure if I shake shook. I'm not sure if I shaked it. I'm not sure if I shook it enough because it feels solid at the bottom. It says it's not from concentrate too. I brought a roll of paper towels just in case there's an accident. Okay, so let's try this appetizer of Spam. I haven't had Spam since I was a little kid. My younger sister and I used to play restaurant when we were kids and she would make me these incredible Spam sandwiches with pretty much everything she could find in the fridge. Okay, so here it is. It really smells incredibly delicious. They had chopsticks and forks. Try it with the chopsticks first. I always do this. Somebody told me this is actually bad luck. I don't know. Okay, so look at this. Ah, it's incredibly hot. Oh, wow. Okay, so you can see a layer of Spam and a layer of rice and the seaweed wrapped around it and then topped with green onions and I believe that's katsu sauce. It smells like a katsu sauce if you've ever had it. It's delicious. It's almost like a Japanese ketchup and I'm probably way off base there, but I've had it at a Japanese restaurant and it tasted sort of like a really good ketchup. Okay, so let's try this with Spam. Okay, it's not bad. The sauce is very sweet. I'm not sure if I would, if I were to do it again, I'm not sure I would get it deep fried. I think it would have been good just on its own. Okay, it's good. I'd say the good thing with this is the Spam does not overpower it at all. All the flavors seem to be evenly distributed. You can hear the end pieces are very crunchy. Okay, I'm curious. I want to sort of taste Spam again. So I'm going to try a piece. It's not horrible. Okay, I'll try a little more rice with seaweed. I could really taste the seaweed in that piece. 
So yeah, when you combine all the elements of it, it's, it creates a flavor all its own. Here's the back of it, the part that was in the deep fryer. Doesn't taste like spam, doesn't taste like rice, doesn't taste like seaweed. Has a very interesting combo of flavors. And then the uh, katsu sauce gives it kind of a sweetness. Okay, let's try this one. I don't know if this is the Moco Loco, Loco Moco. By the way, that crunchy musubi was $3.99 and this drink was $2.75. Okay, and now this is either the lunch plate of chicken and pork or the Loco Moco. This is definitely the Loco Moco. So what it includes is rice and a fried egg and a hamburger patty and then all covered in gravy. And the fried egg is done almost, not raw, but soft. And so it's supposed to mush around when you poke it and get all mixed in with everything else. Sort of like that. Okay, so let's try this. I've never had gravy on rice before. Okay, I'm actually gonna try it with a fork. I'll need to cut into this hamburger patty. So it's also topped with onion, I think. I think that's onion. Okay, this is pretty good. Let's try the hamburger patty with a fried egg on top of it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of everything on here. Egg, hamburger, and some onions. Oh, that is good. I think they might make their own hamburger patties because this tastes very interestingly spiced. Okay, yeah, I really like this. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, this is the most Hawaiian shirt I have. Anyone who knows me knows I love orange. I actually even did a video of an orange loaf, low fat, low calorie, etc., etc. And I wore this shirt for that, but I actually had the shirt long before I ever did the video. Just a bit of history on this lunch. When you think of Hawaiian food, you probably think of things like poi and luau pig and stuff like that. This is more contemporary Hawaiian. This was invented basically by, from what I understand, some soccer players, some young soccer players went to a restaurant and they were hungry and didn't have a lot of money and asked, asked the cook to make them up something that would fill them up for a low price. So he came up with this and then from what I understand the fried egg came later. Like he just gave them hamburger patty and rice and gravy and then in time they added the extra protein with the egg. Oh and I almost forgot one of the other things that goes with it and this is how you know it's contemporary Hawaiian food because the other thing that goes with it is macaroni salad of all things. Let's try the macaroni salad. It's very mayo-y, but there's some tang to it. The macaroni is cooked perfectly. And then there appears to be green onion and carrot. So yeah, it does make a nice addition. But yeah, when you think of Hawaii, you don't think of macaroni salad. So yeah, this is not traditional Hawaiian food. Okay, so let's try the last item on the menu. Yeah, and I think you could tell I was not a huge fan of the poke. But I'm trying to try different things. I'm not crazy about trying different animals. Oh yeah, and by the way, that Loco Moco was $13.95, so $14. Based on today's fast food prices, that's actually not horrible. But I got this single version. It also comes in a double with two of everything. And I think that would really fill you up. But because I wanted to try this as well, I just went with the single. Okay, so this is, this should be chicken. Let's hope. Oh yeah, it is. Yay. I'm pretty sure that's chicken. This one has kulu pork, I think. I'm pronouncing it wrong, I know. Kalula. And katsu chicken and two things of rice. And it also came with a macaroni salad. As I'm eating this, I want to give a shout out to uh, Teddy808. He's a YouTuber from Hawaii and I really enjoy his material. So yeah, Teddy, this is for you. Okay, let's try some rice. It's pretty good. It's funny, when I was a kid, I hated rice. Now I need rice with almost every meal. Okay, so let's try this pork. It looks like pulled pork, kind of. It smells really good. Oh, and it tastes very good. It's got a very savory taste. I was expecting something sweet. Yeah, it's a unique flavor. I've never tasted anything like it. Okay, yeah, very good. Okay, a little more rice. And this is the katsu chicken. This I've had in Japanese restaurants, and yeah, I usually really like it, so we'll see how theirs is. Oh, it's very good. Katsu is kind of sweet, sort of like ketchup. It's got sugar in it, I'm sure. Very unique taste as well. Like there's nothing in regular North American food like any of this. So I can't say it tastes almost exactly like katsu. I can say almost tastes like 
ketchup. That's about as close as I can get in this. And you can see the rice is sprinkled with something. I think this is just sesame seeds because I asked for none of the, some word that starts with F and it's made with various spices and seaweed, but also with fish flakes, which yeah, no, not gonna happen for me. I live in a landlocked province, so stuff from the ocean is a rarity and I grew, I never grew up with it. So it's not something I'm really fond of. I think you could see my reaction to the poke, the raw tuna. Oh God, I can't believe I ate that. Okay, this is pretty darn good. I would definitely come back and do this all again. Let's try some more macaroni salad. It's definitely mayo based, but it's not overwhelming mayo. And I wonder if it's that Pewdie, I think it's called Pewdie Mayo from Japan which has a totally different profile than regular North American mayo. If you ever get a chance, you should try it. Okay, so that's it. That's the deal with Hawaiian food in a landlocked city. If you like this video, please subscribe. And if you've done so already, I really thank you. I really appreciate it. And hit the notification button so you know next time I do a, a video. I usually do reviews of something, so. Okay, see you later. Bye. Cheers, Teddy.